Hey guys, what's good? Welcome back to JDB Selects. Coming at you today with another predicted teams list for round one. This time, the Dolphins. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. And also, be sure to leave your predicted lineups in the comments below. Before we look ahead to 2024, it is always good to look back at the year just gone by. Uh, so the Dolphins in their inaugural season finished 13th. They obviously started really, really strong. Uh, and then their depth was really tested in the later half of the season as they had a lot of players out with injury and suspension. 37.5% win rate, which isn't flash, and a negative 111 points difference. It is hard to say whether last year was a success. I think you could call it one just. I, I know they finished 13th and missed the finals, but they definitely earned a lot of respect in the early parts of the season. Uh, and now that they have recruited a bit more and have really, I guess, improved their depth, I do see them being stronger for longer in 2024. And looking at their gains next year, they've got Jake Averillo coming over from the Canterbury-Bankstown Bulldogs. Uh, great pickup there. Herbie Farmworth and Thomas Flegler both from the Broncos. Two absolute key signings for the Dolphins going forward. Uh, Herbie was absolutely electric for the uh, Broncos last year, as was Flegler. Um, so they'll bring some much-needed depth uh, and resilience to this Dolphins lineup. And in terms of losses, they do lose Herman S.A.S.A. and Oliver Gildart both to Hull in the Super League. And they also lose for Amasili to the Canterbury Bulldogs. Some really good buys there, and they haven't obviously lost a lot uh, of depth, in my opinion. Uh, so I'm really excited to see how the Dolphins look in 2024. So, without further ado, let's get stuck into my predicted teams list for round one. Starting first, obviously, at number one, the fullback. I've gone Hamaso Tabuaifido. Now, a lot of people will probably not like this pick and might be saying, you know, Herbie signed to be a fullback, yada, yada, yada. But I do think that Hamaso uh, should start at number one to start the season. Uh, his speed is unlike no other. Uh, he was a big part of the Dolphins' success early on in the season when he was playing fullback. Uh, and I do think that he should be given a chance first over some of the new recruits. Uh, but obviously, having depth is not a bad thing, right? If something does happen to Hamaso or they need to try something new, they've got Herbie they can play there. They've got Cody Nicarima they can play there. They've got um, Jake Averillo also played a lot of fullback for the Dogs last year. So they've got plenty of depth. But for me, I do think Hamaso should start there. So Hamaso for me, but obviously he could play anywhere on that back line and be an absolute weapon for the Dolphins. Um, they're in a really good position with outside backs this year. Moving now to the wing, the leading try scorer and point scorer uh, last year, Jermaine Isaka. Jermaine had a real career resurgence last year under Wayne Bennett, and I just hope for his sake and for the Dolphins' sake that he can back that up again in 2024 because uh, it was so good to see him doing well again. Moving now to number three, I've gone Jake Averillo. Um, I just touched on it before. I'll probably touch on it again when I talk to the next position as well. But uh, Jake can play anywhere in that back line. He's played fullback for the Dogs, uh, center for the Dogs. For me, he's a center. His speed is also second to none, very similar to Hamaso. Uh, he was one of the Dogs' best last year. Just struggled to get good ball and in good space. But I do think with the current Dolphins lineup, he'll get a better shot at that this season. Uh, 12 tries in 24 games last year, 65 tackle breaks. A really, really good signing for the Dolphins, and I do think that Wayne will bring the best out of him in 2024. And the other centre, I've gone for Herbie Farmworth. I, I do think a lot of people will be wanting Herbie, or expecting Herbie at least, to play fullback. Personally, I have him at centre. He's arguably one of the best centres in the game probably second only to maybe Stephen Crichton in terms of impact he has on games. I mean, you look at those stats, man, right? 15 tries in 26 games, 136 tackle breaks, averaging 170 meters almost. I mean, the dude is an animal on that left edge. And I really do think that his best position is center. Uh, I, I'm more than happy to be proven wrong if he does come out the gates as fullback and kills it. I mean, he's got the natural ability uh, and speed to do that. Uh, but for me, he should be starting at center in round one and we'll see how it goes from them. And the other winger I've gone for is Tessie New. Uh, he only played 17 games last year. Again, he was dealing with some injuries, as were most of the Dolphins pack by the end of the season. Uh, five tries in 17 games, 55 tackle breaks. He's still got a lot of room to grow, but I do think he should retain that jersey come round one. And in at 5-8, I've gone Isaiah Katoa. I mean, the dude is an untapped gem, really. I mean, it's you forget that he's only 19, 18 years old when he started, right? And for him to come out and have the sort of season he did at the start, it was extremely impressive. And he's only going to get better, I think. He's one of those players that if you persist with and give him consistent game time, eventually he'll find that next gear that he needs to find. Um, 22 games, two try assists, average of 200 kicking meters per game. Uh, a lot of untapped potential there. 
and the more game time he can get and the experience he can get in the top grades, it's only going to do him wonders. So, Moving now to halfback, Sean O'Sullivan obviously slots straight in there. Uh, the poor dude, man. I think he tore his peck last season and only managed to play 14 games. Um, again, he was a big part of the Dolphins' early success, and then they did struggle without him in the side. Uh, and then when he came back in the uh, later half of the year, he was one of those players that you could just tell was giving 110%, doing anything he could to try and get his side up and over the line. So really looking forward to hopefully seeing Sean for uh, an extended period of time this season. Yeah, really hope he can stay fit and healthy this year and have a full crack. Moving now to the forwards, starting first at prop, Jesse Bromwich. Uh, I mean, obviously, with all due respect, he is in the twilight of his career. But again, he's one of those players that just keeps turning up, really leads from the front and inspires that younger generation. And I think, although his body may not be able to do the things it used to do, uh, he's still mentally very, very able and willing to, to put his body on the line for his team. Moving now to hooker, obviously, JMK, Jeremy Marshall King. Again, one of those players who was an important part of the Dolphins' early success before injury kept him out for the later half of the season. Um, many were talking him up as one of the best hookers in the game, and it was hard to argue uh, based on what he was doing last year, especially coming from the Dogs, and all of a sudden he you know, was one of the competition's premier hookers. Again, similar to a lot of these players, I just hope he can have a, a full, fit, healthy season. I believe it was a shoulder injury that kept him out uh, at the back end of the season. So hopefully he can get that ironed out over the offseason and come back bigger and better than ever. I mean, 92% tackle efficiency is great. Eight try assists in 15 games, which is pretty good for a hooker. Um, yeah, great player to watch, and hopefully he'll get lots of game time in 2024. And the other prop, obviously, the new man on the block, Thomas Flegler, coming across from the Broncos. Uh, Flegler was a massive part of the Broncos' success last year. Probably didn't get as much shine as he deserved based on the fact that he had Paddy Carrigan and Payne Haas doing numbers week in and week out. Uh, but a really, really solid player, man. 22 games, 109 metres per game, 52 tackle breaks and three tries. Great buy for the Dolphins. They lacked a lot of depth last year, especially in their forwards. And bring with him, you know, the, the experience of a side that went to the grand final last year. Moving now to the second row, starting first, number 11, Felice Calfusi. The dude, Vin Diesel, he was an absolute cult hero for the Dolphins at the start of the season before he fell in love with that shoulder a little bit too much. I think the dude missed quite a few games through suspension. He's only, only, only played 16 last year, um, but when he was on the field, he was massive for the Dolphins. 94.7% tackle efficiency. The dude is solid in defense, put some big shots and big pressure on the opposition, and if he can sort out those disciplinary issues uh, and play long minutes and long games for the Dolphins, uh, he'll go a long way to helping them get across the line. And the other back rower I've gone for, Kenny Bromwich. Uh, very similar story to his uh, brother, Jesse. You know, body's not quite where it used to be, but mentally and physically, he's still turning up. He's giving 110% week in, week out, sharing that knowledge with the younger guys and is still very, very dangerous. Um, I believe him and Jesse both signed two-year deals, which means at this stage, this is potentially their last season uh, with the Finns. That is obviously unless they resign. Uh, but either way, it's been great to watch these guys play, and I think they can play a very, very important part in the Dolphins' success this year. Uh, and even if they do stay on in sort of a mentoring, you know, sort of senior figure role, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. And finally, at lock, Tom Gilbert. Again, one of those players that was a pretty important part of the Dolphins' success early on. Uh, before injury meant he only played 11 games last season. Averaging 120 metres per game with 16 tackle breaks and two tries. Very, very impressive player. A great buy from the Cowboys for the Dolphins. And again, similar to what I've said about a lot of these players, fingers crossed they can stay fit and healthy because they are key players for the Finns. And without them, that depth does get tested. So I would just love for the Dolphins to have a full strength side all the way through and really give it a full crack this year. All right, bang, and just like that, another rambling session done and dusted, talking to myself in my room. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, leave a like on the video if you haven't already. Hit subscribe, drop your predicted teams list in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.